Just like in 2016, this year hackers tried to launch cyber attacks against candidates and campaigns. California Democrat Hans Kierstad says he was the target of a very sophisticated digital attack. The hacks on Kierstad's campaign and company began in August 2017 through a fake email that tricks recipients into allowing access to their emails. Meanwhile, Microsoft said it blocked an attempted breach against three congressional candidates. And reports suggest an unknown number of senators and their staff have seen their private email accounts targeted by foreign hackers, according to one senator. Social media and tech companies have stepped up their efforts to try and stop threats to the midterm elections, employing vast numbers of troll hunters, as we found when we went inside Facebook. I've heard you're described as Facebook's top troll hunter. <laughs> Sounds intimidating. <laughs> This is a really big team working on this problem. In fact, the team Nathaniel Gleischer works with as head of cybersecurity policy at Facebook just got a whole lot bigger. So we've doubled it. Doubled, doubled to 20,000 people in just the past year, all focused on election security, cyber threats, and content review. We have data science experts. We have threat intelligence experts. Gleischer showed us around Facebook's New York offices. The founder of the world's largest social media company, Mark Zuckerberg, just two days after the 2016 election, flatly dismissed the idea that fake news on his platform played a role in influencing the election. I think is a, a pretty crazy idea, right? But this year, Zuckerberg told lawmakers he had changed his mind. We didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, foreign interference in elections. We were too slow, and it meant we, we missed things. And what we've been focused on is making sure that that doesn't happen. That's why this is such a high priority. That's why we're laser focused on this. In advance of this year's midterm elections, Facebook says it has taken down 1.3 billion fake accounts, built an election war room, and expanded partnerships with federal agencies, rolled out free security tools for candidates and campaigns, and launched an ad transparency database. Voters are dubious. A poll last month found 80% of Americans have no confidence, or not very much, that what they read on Facebook is true. Meanwhile, Twitter tells us it is also stepping up election security by removing hundreds of accounts pretending to be members of various state Republican parties or which appeared to originate in Iran. But it may fall far short. New research finds 89 percent of Twitter accounts that spread fake and conspiracy news in the 2016 election remained active earlier this year. Microsoft says it blocked an attempted breach against three congressional candidates and tells us it launched a defending democracy program that is now protecting more than 30 campaigns. Are the social media companies doing enough to protect our elections? I think there's no question, absolutely no question in my mind that everybody is taking this problem, this challenge seriously, including the social media companies. But there is a limit to Facebook's transparency. You can't tell us how many candidates or campaigns that you reach out to because you suspect they've been a target. No. I notice on the wall right next to us it says be open. <laughs> uh, is Facebook being as open and transparent as it should be on this topic? We've been pretty driven to be as open and transparent as we can be. In any security space, you always have to be careful that what you're doing isn't playing into the hands of the threat actor. So we have to be careful. Facebook says it's also helped protect elections in France, Germany, Mexico, and Brazil.